Experts say approximately 10% of pregnancies worldwide are affected by gestational diabetes, a type of diabetes that develops during pregnancy. The condition can lead to various health complications for both mother and the baby, including a higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes later in life. In this special report, our health correspondent Lois Abbasambo delves deeper into the link between sugar intake and gestational diabetes, highlighting the negative impact of excessive sugar consumption, especially during pregnancy. Her report. We have civilized our diet. We left the normal Nigerian healthy diet for the civilized one. And because of that, we began to acquire all the diseases of civilization. So diabetes is one of them. They said the sugar is like a toxin to the child. But I just took it with levity. And it was that levity that caused all those things. Personally, I have a pile. And once you are induced with pile, you have to curtail your intake of sugar because it triggers it also. I love sugar. Uh, anything that has to do with sugar, I don't drink sugar. But I would want not to take sugar, but I don't know. I can't help it. It's only sweet in the tongue, but you don't know the damage it causes in your body. Many of you may be feeling that they are enjoying their life, not knowing that they are leading themselves into death. Sugar is the generic name for sweet tasting soluble carbohydrates, many of which are used in food. The body needs one type of sugar called glucose to survive. Glucose is the number one food for the brain and an extremely important source of fuel throughout the body. One of life's great pleasures is the taste of sugar on the tongue. People's love for sweet things is so deep rooted that food companies lure consumers by adding sugar to their products. Sugar-sweetened beverages, popularly known as soft drinks, are the most commonly consumed energy drinks in Nigeria. Carbonated and sweetened with high fructose, corn syrup, sucrose, or even both, these drinks provide a quick source of energy but can also be unhealthy if consumed in large quantities. Despite the health risks associated with these drinks, they are still widely consumed in Nigeria as many people rely on these drinks for energy and to quench their thirst. I do take self drink. In fact, I like taking self drink. Like maybe once in two days, I do take it. I drink eight, nine, and if I get more, I can take ten cans of soft drink in a day. I take it just to enjoy myself. I love sugar. Uh, anything that has to do with sugar, I don't drink sugar. But I will want not to take sugar, but I don't know. I can't help it. I can consume up to like five biscuits that contain many sugar inside, and I won't stop. I'm not a fan of mineral. I do my juice, my natural juice. Personally, I have a um, pile. And once you are induced with pile, you have to curtail your intake of sugar because it triggers it also. It does trigger it. So it even makes you bleach. It makes you go through a lot. So for that, I had to cut down on my intake of sugar. Nigeria is Africa's largest and most populated country. And this means that Nigeria will have the highest consumption rate of sugar-sweetened beverages. Of the over 115 million liters of sugar-sweetened beverages sold worldwide annually, an estimated 38.6 million liters are consumed in Nigeria. With this large consumption of sugar-sweetened beverages, it is no wonder that non-communicable diseases account for about 29% of total deaths in the country. My name is Lois Ap.
Osambo, and I am a health journalist. Being on the go almost every day as a journalist, I also find myself consuming a lot of sugar-sweetened beverages on a daily basis. But as a lady who is enthusiastic about being a mother one day, I am mindful of how this may affect me. So I set out to find out how sugar affects pregnant women. The most heartwarming experience of a woman's life is the joy of bringing a baby into the world and being able to provide the best care and love for her new bundle of joy. This joy can be felt even more deeply when the journey of pregnancy and childbirth goes smoothly and the mother is able to safely bring her child into the world. The journey of a pregnant woman is a bittersweet one. On one hand, there is the joy and excitement of a new life, and on the other hand, are the physical and emotional challenges that come with being pregnant. Most pregnancies progress without any issues. However, approximately 8% of all pregnancies involve complications. Gestational diabetes is one of the common complications women face during pregnancy. Gestational diabetes is fast becoming a public health concern. This is because this form of diabetes is triggered simply because the woman is pregnant. In every 1,000 women you see these days, three, of, three in 1,000 have gestational diabetes. Sometimes that the range can be from 0.3 to like even 11% from some studies. So it's actually huge. We are beginning to see more and more women coming down with gestational diabetes. Apart from the risk factor of maybe family history of diabetes, our unhealthy lifestyles and choices have been have led to increase even in prevalence of diabetes generally. What is found to be uh, explanatory uh, to the development of uh, gestational diabetes uh, is because pregnancy itself is diabetogenic. That means pregnancy hormone, the cortisol, the progesterone, and, and others are known to make a woman make women uh, that are pregnant uh, predisposed to gestational diabetes. That's why we say they are diabetogenic. For instance, uh, these hormones essentially make glucose available for the fetus. We call it glucose sparing. You know, they, they make glucose available for the pit, for the fetus uh, in utero. Okay, for some, for some reason, uh, coupled with this, there is a reduction in the renal threshold of, uh, of glucose. That is the amount of glucose in the blood before it begins to appear in the urine is lower compared to when the woman is not pregnant from 10 to 8.5. For the sake of her privacy, we will not be using her real name. Mrs. Joy had waited 12 years for a child Having her miracle baby, her joy knew no bounds. But a few months to her due date, she was diagnosed with gestational diabetes. Actually, when I was first diagnosed, it seems, you know, I felt very bad. But, you know, I never knew that such gestational diabetes can affect the baby in you. The first one was not well managed. Because it came too late. I discovered while I was getting to 35, 36. So the managing was not. Actually, when I even heard about it, I took it as a, just a minor thing. Not until a week appointment after. When I came, they said the fetal heart was not okay. And from there, that was how I lost. I felt very bad uh, because of a little, you know, my own part mistake. I just was a child like that. So that was why now I have to take it upon myself, whatsoever it will cost me. I won't lie to you. They try to take their time to explain to me. But along the line, I won't lie to you. Me, myself, you know, I just took it with levity. 
and it will be available to that cost all those things. Mm, okay. I was Appreciate just thinking to you know, small because they said the sugar is like a toxin to the child. But yeah, to me, I just felt I sad. eat something nutritious. How can it be a toxin to a child? Mm. So that was, that was I just said the whole of it was just ignorance. But now that I have known how to abide uh, like you were saying it was a child you had really waited no, for waited for yeah it was very painful very very painful you know when you were uh, looking forward to carry a live baby all of a sudden it now turns to be a dead child it's very traumatic if only she knew what gestational diabetes was and how much her intake of sugar complicated the situation. If blood sugar is not very good, it can actually affect the baby, the fetus that is developing. It can actually lead to a miscarriage, really. So they can lose the pregnancy, you know, within the first three, four months. If they are lucky, you know, blood sugar really okay, they continue with the pregnancy, they have to make sure that they keep to appointments with the doctors, you know, both the gynecologists looking after them and then the diabetes specialists, the two have to work together on this patient to make sure that blood sugar is good throughout pregnancy. Because if it's not, it can even cause uh, some defects, some congenital defects can, can occur in that baby. Okay? And then, you know, the baby now can get very big inside the uterus. And the reason is because of the environment, you know, the sugar in the, envir in the environment the baby is growing is very is high. So sugar gets, crosses the placenta, the, the, the sugar in the mother crosses the placenta to the, to the fetus. So if the blood sugar in the fetus is high, then the pancreas, that's this, the organ that, you know, the cells that produce insulin comes from they have to produce more insulin than the baby needs to take care of that high blood sugar. So this sugary environment makes the baby big and at birth can bring a lot of problems. The baby may be too big to come out normally, so the, the doctors who have to do a cesarean section can have injuries in the shoulders, the baby can become jaundiced at birth, the baby can actually have very low blood sugar at birth. All these are, you know, part of the complications, you know, of uh, blood sugar issues at birth. Infant mortality rate in Nigeria is currently put at 54.740 deaths per 1,000 life births, with maternal gestational diabetes silently adding to the numbers. There is uh, studies that shows that babies born to diabetic mother in the future, they have the risk of being diabetic themselves too. What pregnant women most times don't really understand is how detrimental their diet can be to their health and that of their baby. Unmanaged diabetes has a lot of uh, implication to the woman, to the developing fetus, and even to the neonate when it is born. For instance, when baby is born to an uncontrolled diabetes uh, patient, the baby is already being used, it's already used to excessive blood sugar in utero. These baby usually tend to be bigger, and then the fetal insulin, the fetal hormone that uh, controls the fetal blood glucose is also high. When these babies are born, the insulin is still high, but suddenly you've cut off the, the, the maternal blood sugar. So they tend to develop uh, low blood sugar, which is called hypoglycemia. And then it's one of the causes of neonatal uh, death. So such fetuses need to be taken care of by experts. Mrs. Grace's story is similar to that of Mrs. Joy. Mrs. Grace had a great love for sugar, and with pregnancy cravings, nothing would stop her. Pregnant women crave a lot. See things you want to eat. Yeah, I was taking it. I was bringing mugs, bread. Uh, this thing, uh, they call it uh, ice cream. I was even making ice cream myself for my children to go to school. But when I now noticed that 
as I'm doing ice cream and uh, meat pie and all these things, I eat also. I didn't know I was diabetic when I had my fifth child. And it was really uh, during delivery. The head came out, the body refused to come out. But God intervened, finally came out. I didn't know that I was uh, diabetic. I almost lose my baby in order to save my life. But the doctors were contemplating whether it's to pieces the baby and bring the baby out while they saved my life. I was have to change position as a woman, kneeling down to push my baby. That was the only pregnancy that, as a woman in labor, I was asked to change position to push my baby. And because of the baby was so big, so I changed position. I was pushing. I said, that this is the baby. The baby did not come out. But God intervened. When he was small, when I gave back to him, one of the heart was broken. The other one was stiff. But God intervened. And he was on ICU for over six days. The sixth pregnancy, I lost the sixth baby because of, I think the doctor also did not explain where well because uh, they didn't introduce me to their dietitian to guide me on diets to eat. So I was actually also eating wrongly. Because it would be anything that I crave for, I should go for it. With the use of the insulin, it will help me. But it was my seventh pregnancy that the doctors now introduced me to their dietitian. And I was told on how to manage my diet. That was when the baby came out 4.6. And the, she's okay. No one likes to suffer with sickness, maybe at old age or later. So you have to work on your diet. Even without having diabetes, it's good for one to live a healthy life. Eating vegetable and little carbohydrate, even you, when you eat it and you get used to it, you feel like every other normal human being. You don't have to be eat, going into sugary things which have health effects. Because it's only sweet in the tongue, but you don't know the damage it causes in the body. All these carbonated drinks are not good for health. They are not good for health at all. So if one is taking, you can even take fruit juice, it's better. It's better if you take fruit juice, you do it yourself, it's better. All those uh, ice cream, have to, not as if, if you are not having diabetes, now I say it's not good, but you have to take it once in a while. You don't have to make it a compulsory thing. Every day you must take ice cream because it's like you're, you're killing yourself indirectly with that man. After almost losing her fifth child to gestational diabetes, she would ultimately give up sugar for her unborn child. I have to stop it and work on my diet. So I have to stop my sugar eating. I don't even eat sugar at all. Maybe after delivery, sometimes I take like malt and all that. But now I'm working on my diet. Sugar from processed foods are very dangerous to the health. High simple sugar intake during gestation may contribute to an excessive gestational weight gain as well as develop other pregnancy complications such as gestational diabetes and preterm birth. Whether in foods or in drinks, these simple sugars pose a health risk. Whether there is diabetes or not, people should reduce the amount of these sweetened beverages they take because they contain sugars in their most easily absorbable form. So the moment you drink, it runs to the blood to increase the blood sugar and stresses the pancreas. Stresses the cells where insulin that you know helps us to take care of everything we eat, 
as a source of energy and nutrition comes up. So if you keep pushing and pushing and pushing this thing, it still it comes, it, it's tired now. And it's tired and that is it. And there is nothing you can go about it. So you, the person starts to battle with diabetes. So what we are saying, what we are telling people is, take steps to preserve your pancreas, to see you to old age. That's what we are telling people. But somehow people in Nigeria, people love sweet things too much. You will see donut that is already heavy in calorie. Then they will put granulated sugar on top of it. And people enjoy it. When you ask the person producing it, why are you, you say that is the one people like, that's the one they will buy. Even this uh, Zobo that we drink, there is no need to add sugar to Zobo. A healthy diet plays a key role in tackling maternal and infant mortality caused by gestational diabetes. We have civilized our diet. Okay, we left the normal Nigerian healthy diet for the civilized one. And because of that, we began to acquire all the diseases of civilization. So diabetes is one of them. Hypertension is another. And nutrition is a key to almost all health care. You're managing all health care. Because what you eat is what you are. Gestational diabetes being one out of the three major diabetic problems is uh, one of the things that uh, we need to use healthy feeding in uh, taking care you know, in combination with drugs. Because uh, if per venture you are using only drugs, you cannot get your way through. In the year 2021, the Nigerian government introduced the 10 Naira tax on carbonated drinks and sugar sweetened non alcoholic beverages. So there's now an excise duty of 10 Naira per liter imposed on all non alcoholic carbonated and sweetened beverages. And this is designed to one, discourage excessive consumption of sugar in beverages, which contributes to a number of health conditions, including diabetes and obesity, but also this new sugar tax in, is introduced to raise excise duties and revenues for health-related issues and other critical expenditures. This is in line also with the 2022 uh, budget priorities. But how far has the policy gone? What we should start looking at is the commitment of government, because for the truth, the the tax is just minute, it's just 10 euro per liter. And I want to believe that the industry has absorbed it. And of a fact, you would not have seen any spiral increase in the price of SSPs. To make it worse, it was not inflation adjusted, it was just 10 euro uh, inflation as taking it off already, industry has covered it, they've paid it on behalf of the consumers, and also the, 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 the government uh, has not, to my knowledge, put in place a metric to measure what they have done. And uh, I think from some engagement that we've had as an organization also, uh, the, the service required by law to collect this tax um, has not come forth with a report so far. There's a need for them to do more than increasing tax because tax will not prevent the, the producer from producing. So you have to solve your problem from the grassroots, not uh, from the uh, upper part of it. You didn't get, get the top root of your problem and start solving it, the problem will not be solved. The increase in the price or tax to the company, they will now share it among the customers. The customers may not even know that they are, they are, they are trying to help them in a way. So there's a, new, a need for grassroots education. In spite of numerous warnings from health experts about the dangers of sugar-sweetened beverages on health, people are still bent on consuming them. It costs tons in inclusion and health education in Nigeria. I think uh, it will go a long way to minimize and reduce these uh, factors. Because if you know your problem, you know where you're going to solve it and how to start uh, 
looking for your way out. But if you don't know, many may be feeling that they are enjoying their life, not knowing that they're entering, leading themselves into debt. In a no distance time, the person becomes diabetic or hypertensive. It's not only that a diabetic is the issue, because uh, to me, I would say that uh, diabetes is more dangerous than even HIV, because uh, the complication is too much. If you have issues with diabetes, almost all the vital organs will be affected. They start from the eye, heart, kidney, and all whatnot. The World Health Organization has identified sugar-sweetened beverages as one of the main contributors to the global obesity epidemic, which greatly contribute to non-communicable diseases such as diabetes. In order to reduce the consumption of sugar-sweetened beverages, governments must take the lead in educating the public about the health risks associated with these beverages. At the same time, producers of sugar-sweetened beverages should also strive to become more socially responsible by developing healthier alternatives to their existing products, reducing the amount of sugar in their products, and providing more transparent information about their products.